Thank you, Diego, and good afternoon, everybody. So as uh, Diego said, this uh, workshop is about uh, data spaces and the challenges that we are facing. So we would like to, what we would like to do here is to stimu stimulate the discussion on, on regarding data spaces and the different solutions that, that can, can appear. Uh, next, or do I have a, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so just uh, an introductory slide for the ones that no are not very familiar with data spaces. Uh, data spaces are like an infrastructure that should enable data change, but based on trusted and secure trading of data with automated and robust, uh, robust controls with a legal compliance and remuneration, but also with regulations for personal data that needs to be ensured. Uh, this is a concept general for data spaces, but then there is this Green Deal data space that I don't know if you are familiar with. The Green Deal data space is the European Commission solution to support implementing the Green Deal policies, but with relevant data on environmental and biodiversity, and in this case, air, water, soil here in this uh, figure here, you can see the European Green Deal uh, promoting clean energy, protecting nature from farm to fork, etc., and then contribute to better environmental transparency and better decision making. Uh, one of the big issues of data spaces, of the Green Deal data space, is that there is a multi source of data coming from in situ, from remote sensing, from citizen science, from uh, whatever, and this is one of the issues that uh, data space uh, should face. Uh, then for this, uh, for this workshop, I was thinking a bit on what are these the challenges that the space should, uh, should face. Um, and with these, uh, rule of, uh, with these uh, points here, then I would like to stimulate the, the discussion among you. But it could be about semantic interoperability, if to be sure that we are talking about the same things when we are describing our data. Also, uh, with this multi-source of data you know, coming from in situ, coming from IoT, coming whatever, then how metadata is dynamically and automatically documented. Also, with this multi-source data integration from several mm, sources, uh, scales, whatever, the dynamical multidimensional data cubes is also another uh, burning, burning issue here in the data space. Also, sensor and IoT data uh, integrate APIs implementations with these data space connectors. How do we do standard data queries to this uh, data using APIs or OpenEO that many of you know from the OMC. Also, the authentication, authentication is another important issue because, as I said, the sovereignty of the data is very key for the data spaces. And for instance, the geospatial user feedback, among other topics that could arise. Uh, we are promoting a special issue on, on this earth observation data in environmental data spaces that uh, we <laughs> encourage you to, to contribute. You have time till November, but maybe we'll extend this. I'm not sure. And the participants here in the, <laughs> in the round table is uh, Joan Mazo that is um, uh, presenting the All Data for Green Deal, that it's one of these European projects uh, regarding the data spaces, the Green Deal data spaces. Then we have Cathy Schleif, that is uh, representing FairyCube, that is our sister project. Then we have online Giacomo Martirano, that is representing Usage, and Miluti Milenkovic, I'm not knowing and saying it fine, uh, that is representing uh, Open Earth Monitor. So, and then all of us that we will participate in the discussion. Then uh, I don't know who is, uh, maybe Joan, or okay, then with Joan, if you want to start your presentation. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Diego. I think the last slide was there. Uh, is my good microphone? <laughs> Thing. 
So I'm here representing the I'm here representing the All Data for Green Deal. This is one of the four projects that the European Commission awarded simultaneously in support for the creation of the Green Deal Data Commission. And I say in support to the creation because we are not going to create the Green Deal Data Space. We are only doing research on the Green Deal Data Space because the creation will come later. Uh, this is our view to, uh, to our approach to, to, to this is uh, at the beginning when, uh, when we created this slide, we call it the destruction and reconstruction of the layers. Uh, and this is because uh, we were a little bit tired with this uh, concept of, of separating the GIS data into, into layers. That's the magic of the GIS, but, but it's also something that is not enabling multidisciplinary research if you want easily. So instead, we realized that there are two paradigms, more or less. One is that is more object-oriented, maybe sensor-oriented in the left-hand side, and uh, another one that is more data cube in the, in the other side. Uh, we are actually using the semantic tagging to uh, connect both worlds. So to us, the idea of having semantic labels that characterize the, the in-situ data, but also the remote sensing data, is one of the things that is important from us. It is also important to recover this idea, uh, well, this, this thing about metadata, so I'm representing the metadata there, up there in the geo network, but at some point, when you do your queries, you extract things and you need to keep uh, that uh, metadata. Uh, so we have been working on different components, technical components. We also work on pilots, but you know, Yvette told me five minutes, so no pilots uh, for you, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no a big list of components either, just a couple of examples. And uh, being egoistical here, I'm presenting my examples, the, the little things that I did. So one of the things is called Tapis. Tapis is uh, a client for Sensor Thing API. Uh, at least it was born designed like this. Um, the idea is Sensor Thing API has a, has a complex uh, model that separates the different concepts, but then you need to reintegrate those concepts to present the data to the final user. If not, uh, the user is lost. Uh, but the more I was working with that, the more I realized that, that it's necessary to actually integrate more components. So here, my little exercise where you go to a metadata catalog, this is our geo network, you can read it there. Uh, you just get a little list of things that we have. Uh, that catalog points you to a query uh, on a sensor thing API. So you can click on that uh, and select that query and just open that query. This is exactly what you get. Uh, you get uh, some observations and here the exercise is you have two data streams one data stream that tells you about occurrences and another data stream that tells you about pictures. And those things are related together in something that we call observation group. But the observation group gets very messy, so we try to fragment that in, into separating columns. We uh, reattach a description with the phenomenon time uh, by concatenating a couple of fields. And in the end, you select two of those fields and you get the description and the great pictures of a camera trap where you see this little guy. Uh, and all these things you do it, just going click to click to different things without knowing much about the protocols behind. But I'm pretty sure that you saw, oops, uh, I'm pretty sure that you saw the URLs there. So here we are, we are also showing the URLs because we really believe in interoperability and the web services are behind. So we are not hiding, uh, hiding the complexity, but we are trying to make it manageable. So that's one thing. The other thing that we did was uh, we, were, we were in this open data cube wave. This is the pro pro profile of Catalonia. This is uh, my region uh, uh, east of, uh, east northeast of Spain. And uh, we wanted to create something that was called the Catalan data cube. Uh, but you, you know, Jupyter notebooks and so on. But we wanted to expose this data to the, to, to the others in an easy way. So there is this new uh, API that the OGC is presenting that is called the uh, o OGC uh, API coverages. And uh, we wanted to connect both, both worlds and we created this little script that is actually a Python script that is internally 
querying X arrays in the open data queue, but externally exposing the, the syntax. And I'm offering you a complex, well, complex, syntax that is not trivial, uh, that selects one particular date, and then uh, does, it creates a property by uh, doing the difference between uh, forest and at that time and forest in another time. Uh, and uh, this is actually what is happening, combining two different times. Uh, this is not forest itself, this is uh, the connectivity map of the forest areas. So how well connected a forest area is with neighbors. This is what he's trying to represent. And then you can, you can do the difference between the two images separated five years, and you get some white areas that are improving connectivity and black areas that are decreasing connectivity. Uh, trying to do a summary of what we are doing, this is a typical design of a data space from the data space support center. And uh, we are using the OGC rainbow as a vocabulary. We are using the geo networks catalog. We are using these OGC protocols as, as data exchange. And uh, we are experimenting with Eclipse, Eclipse uh, data connector to actually do this idea of contracts and uh, trust and sovereignty. And I believe I already exceeded the five minutes, but the moderator is not saying anything, so I will continue until you stop me. <laughs> so the, the, the whole thing is we are doing business as usual, but we are adding this concept of data sovereignty, data contracts, and so on, provided by the data space that gives you an step forward uh, for not only doing open data, but also creating uh, business. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I'm Kathy Schleit, and I'll be telling you a bit about what we are doing in Data Cove. As Joan already mentioned, Data Cove, um, no, not Data Cove, sorry, uh, Fairy Cube. Too, too, too many names. Um, so, what we are doing in, in Fairy Cube, as Joan mentioned, Fairy Cube is one of the siblings of AD for GB, also trying to sketch a path forward. What does this Green Deal data space look like? As you already see from our name, we are more focused on cube data. Next slide. Or, ah, I've, I've got that, cool. Okay, so short overview, I mean, the, we've got the main objective of Fairy Cube up at the top, and I mean, this project was born out of ideas we had over the years with various colleagues working on terrestrial data, and in this case, a colleague from the Natural History Museum, he's strongly involved in digitizing all of these biodiversity occurrence data. We'd had epic discussions long nights with many beer discussing what could we do if we could combine this with the various products coming from EO. I mean, if nothing else, just as data quality, if, if we know what the various layers look where, where known daisies are, are somehow stored, then if we get a new occurrence record coming in, we can compare it with the various environmental factors, see if that is relevant. The idea sounded good, and in reality we realized this is we need a serious project because there are too many tricky bits at the edges here which don't work and how do we get a handle on them? And that's what we then created the Fairy Cube project for. So I mean the core objective is to enable players from beyond the class CEO domains to manage to somehow provide access, process, and share gridded data in a fair and trustful manner in order to move this world forward. And for this purpose, we've set up five different use cases, and they're, they're ranging between urban and rural. We've got one which is clustering various European cities based on all sorts of environmental factors. We've got one which is trying to see what can we find out about building efficiency from all of this EO data. We've got one interesting one, they're working on Drosophila genetics and analyzing various Drosophila populations figuring out how far have these morphed from the original, comparing that with all sorts of data we can extract from the satellite data. What is influencing the, 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 the change in, in genetics? 
I mean, the first thing that came out, the closer to the equator, the more they morph. So now we're trying to go through and analyze and see what else could that be. And going through use cases, one is trying to figure out how do farming practices influence the biodiversity. And the final one is trying to go through and figure out if all of the species distribution and species groups really works properly. Okay, and to do this, we have a very eclectic mix of software, technologies, we've got all sorts of symbols there. I assume you know them, I won't go through them. And yes, we are funded by Horizon, that information's at the bottom. Um, now going through, what, what do we really see as the requirements for the DDS? I mean, that, that has been our goal, we're trying to do something, but the real background of our doing is not doing, it is the figuring out what works, what doesn't work. First, thi first point is metadata. And what we've noticed with all of the EO data products is that, I mean, there's a, a beautiful metadata system set up for raw EO data. And now they're trying to utilize the exact same metadata system for the products. And that breaks badly because the, the EO metadata system, it's, it's well-tooled for raw satellite data. It crumbles badly with these products which have different meanings. And there we're also working on aligning the various standards. We've noticed we've, we've been doing various collaboration activities between our projects and noticed we're using very different systems. How can we align them? Because we need to be interoperable. Current status is we'd like to look at GeoDCAT as a common semantic framework. So that's the one pl place where we've got some serious work to do. Next point is data access. So John already mentioned a bit about the, the OGC APIs on coverage. Within FairyQ, we started working with the old OGC web services, the web coverage service, and there, unfortunately, we ran into all sorts of technical issues. And since the OWS are not really being further maintained by the OGC, we're now trying to move away from the web coverage service, focusing on the various emerging APIs. So the one is the OGC API coverage, which John has mentioned. A second one, which would be relevant, would be the environmental data retrieval API. And these are both from OGC. A third one would be OpenEO. So these are the various APIs we're currently investigating for fitness for purpose to really share this data. Third point, which we see real work to do are concepts and vocabularies. And this is essential for all sorts of data sharing. And I mean, I'm not saying you need the same models, but one of the things I've learned over the years is if, if your models are based on a common agreed conceptual model, it is so easy to transform from one serialization to the other. If you've structured your data freestyle, it'll be a nightmare to get that to interoperate with anybody else's data. So if possible, try and see if there are conceptual models available for what you're doing and use them. The further aspect here are really um, various vocabularies going towards onco ontologies. We need to nail down our common concepts. One of the areas are the observable properties or the variable. What does this data really mean? Okay, one more point and I will shut up. So final point is analysis and processing. I mean, it's amazing what's possible. It's unclear how dependable the outputs are. And one of the nightmares we found is it's impossible to determine what research u resource usage you will have to actually perform what you want to do. So that's a further thing we're working with quietly. Thank you. Now is the remote one. <laughs> okay, so now Giacomo, can you hear us <laughs> from the sky or wherever you are? You can start your, I think we need to invite him. Let me see. Um, I'm, I'm sharing the screen. I okay. think you are okay. Now. Can, can you see it? Yes, I think we okay. can. So, so I'm representing uh, Usage, which is a sister project of uh, AD 40 d and 32, funded under the same, the same wave. So some uh, facts and figures. For uh, prototype urban data spaces being implemented in four pilot cities in four different countries, 11 use cases addressing three European Green Deal policy areas covered in turn by local green uh, deal or city contracts, a policy-driven use case conceptual model, a BPMN representation of the uh, workflow of uh, all the use cases, 
a geonetwork based uh, catalog currently uh, publishing uh, uh, almost 350 dataset metadata and about 50 tools and algorithms metadata, uh, harvesting existing seek and open data catalogs, allowing editing of new metadata using ISO 19115 based templates, and adopting a procedure to document in the lineage field both semantic and syntactic requirements for new datasets. In terms of semantic harmonization of decision rate information, uh, how we call the use case output datasets feeding the decision support system, uh, is based on uh, extending uh, and flattening uh, inspired core data models. We have adopted a um, use case focused validation approach for a data space running um, uh, several use cases and uh, also a data space validation dashboard. And last but not least, we are currently going through a mapping of the um, uh, data space uh, um, technical and business organizational building blocks of uh, um, the data space support center blueprint version 1.0. These in, in, synthetically are the, 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 the main achievement so far there is one year uh, ahead to complete all these things and uh, very briefly with a with a few figures this is the uh, use case conceptual conceptual model i was referring above in which we uh, provide some structured uh, way to link to start from the european green deal policy area to the local green deal city contract challenges and priorities and then the processing step of each use case divided into tool and algorithms needed and data set input and, that, and output linked each other uh, through uh, metadata. This is the, uh, uh, let's say, non-technical validation approach in which we are simulating uh, for each data space uh, board, uh, members of a board, uh, each of them uh, representing uh, a role covering a, a specific role in the in the data space from the decision maker the policy expert the technology expert the data expert the legal expert the citizen and the digital economy expert these are the 13 questions that we are posing to validate all the uh, use cases in a in a, in a stepwise uh, approach continuously in order to have some uh, let's say improvement uh, uh, cycle touching upon aspects like uh, IPR issues, uh, licensing conditions, and final benefits from, from the citizens. Finally, uh, the validation dashboard is a simple um, system based on radar graphs in which the four cities are compared in terms of uh, uh, a set of indicators, uh, on top of which you can see that there is uh, uh, indicators like the fairness ratio, or the high value data set ratio, findability ratio, open data ratio, but also some more non-technical ones like the suitability of the business models and uh, the, uh, let's say, uptake or reuse of data space components, which are monitored and update uh, on a regular basis to uh, monitor uh, the, the trend of the uh, progress of the data space. And thank you very much for your attention. Here there are uh, some uh, links where more information can be easily found. Thank you very much. Thank you, for th thank you, Giacomo, for that. And now Milutin. Okay, so already my slides. Uh, yeah, I will present the Open Earth Monitor uh, here. So in case you missed the intro session this morning, uh, yeah, Open Earth Monitor is quite quite a uh, big uh, European Horizon Europe project. We have uh, many partners, but uh, uh, yeah, what is relevant for data is that uh, that we are uh, actually mostly focused on fair science, so reproducible research, open source software, open data license, uh, data and uh, metadata repositories and catalogs. So you see those two things marked there. Uh, but what is important to say that we are also, uh, let's say, 
focused on co-development with user communities. So we try to develop, we have 32 different use cases and we have different monitors. So, so such as biodiversity, agriculture monitor, forestry monitor, soil, uh, climate and so on. So you can imagine that there is really a, a quite a, a wide variety of, of data sets there uh, fluctuating and, and let's say uh, in involved in a project. On top of that, we have also in situ component, in situ data. So I'm very happy to Simone here. Uh, he's, uh, he's leading uh, this working package on, on in situ data. So yeah, and uh, so the point is that we are trying to incorporate somehow m diversity of, of those data. So satellite data, in situ data, into the geo stories and, and monitors in, in, in the central central lab. Yeah, so that's that's about the the project and and his uh, data component. Uh, oops, uh, I'm going backward, but forward. Uh, what is interesting to say about the fair data? So we we are also trying for all of those use cases, as as you can see here. I think this is a pointer or pointer or not. No, there is no pointer. Anyway, so there are, we have a use cases and monitors and they uh, provide some products, yeah, uh, usually the maps, and they are going through the check-in procedure. So this green check-in box means that, uh, um, so each use case and, and monitor before they are published, they, they have to go through the certain validation process and checking on, 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 on these fair principles. Uh, on top of that, Open Earth Monitor is not only about the fair, it's of course about the open data. We, are, uh, we would like to have all our data open with the open license and on top of that, uh, cloud optimized. So we uh, basically in a project, we think it's uh, fair and open, uh, it's, it's great, but, but cloud optimized is something uh, especially for, for Earth observation data uh, uh, important yeah and that we really want to uh, uh, to focus on that uh, I'm double happy today because I also see Leandro he's uh, responsible for the data management plan and uh, yeah he can also help me answering many other technical details about this data management plan uh, but uh, uh, what is basically there it's it's actually amazing document I, I uh, uh, about how, how we deal with data in a project and uh, it's actually a recommendation. A lot of uh, data exposure is based on stack catalogs and uh, so the stack catalogs, it's, uh, it's, it's still not a standard or as you probably know, but uh, it's, uh, it's really helping a lot in, uh, uh, in data to be accessible and, uh, and findable. So we are also based on cloud optimized geotiffs. So, so we, we, uh, we force our, that our outputs are in, uh, in those formats. And if we have a point data or let's say polygon data, in situ data, uh, we are converting them to the parquet and, and making part of, uh, uh, of the in situ data catalog. Yeah, so we, we, have, uh, we will have our own open earth monitor in situ data catalog and uh, and we will have a stack uh, uh, for for those data set. So th that's this means that this is another checking uh, of all our products as, as you see the, the, the this part here. And then we have a third part of, uh, of in Open Earth Monitor project. So it's, it's mostly related to the working package tool where, uh, where we are looking at other data in Europe and uh, Geos data and, and trying to evaluate them how they are, uh, are they are fair compliant. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's also what we do. Maybe an interesting thing on, on, on top left corner to uh, explain. Uh, uh, so yeah, as, as we started this work in working package two about the fair data, we also run a survey and uh, yeah, about the fair data and then we ask how, uh, uh, so we have two users, uh, so we have two groups, uh, uh, data providers and data users. And yeah, for me, when I was looking the data and also, yeah, um, 
other people also notice that it's that we have a producer community that are about 40% of people who are producing the data that they are either totally not aware or partly or like little aware of uh, fair data, which is quite striking. I mean, one big caveat to, to this conclusion is like at this moment we only have uh, 100 uh, responders, so not, not so many producers, but uh, now uh, I think in a previous session uh, uh, a colleague of mine, Katya, she presented the new uh, update, so we have about 40% more people participating the, uh, participating the, the survey, and, and basically this number is still around 40%, yeah. So it's, it's quite, quite a, a, a strike, striking conclusion, you know, that, that uh, there are 40% of data providers uh, who are not aware of fair data, and and I would uh, yeah let's let's be clear immediately here. So I'm I'm not thinking that Copernic that people from Copernicus data are not aware of that or NASA or whatever you know those big companies. But it's I think it's uh, our target community is is actually uh, researchers and and uh, many others uh, 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 like national organization and uh, research organization who provides uh, certain. Uh, yeah, let's let's call it small products. It's every product is appreciated, but let's say data that are that that are yeah like not massively produced. So probably this is a target group. This is my speculation. We didn't in our fair data survey we didn't we didn't have further questions to investigate that. But uh, but I would say probably in, in this direction uh, this is this is where where the the problem could be. And yeah. That's that's all from my side, and uh, yeah, happy to answer the question together with uh, OpenNet Monitor colleagues here.